Ah, uh, two weeks ago today, I was in the hot seat in Philadelphia. I was the one putting the engines on this side of the train. I was actually in tears because I was afraid I wasn't going to get my answer. And I got my answer. And the rest of the seminar was directed exactly at me. And I listen to you all the time, so I'm hearing you differently now. And I'm hearing new words that aren't new, but they're new. Like intent and focus and deliberate and thought. Aren't those good feeling words? They are. Because deliberate means not an engine this way and an engine this way, just one this way. Focused, not an engine this way and an engine this way, just an engine this way. It's something that you can do easily. It's easy. And the more momentum that you allow, the easier it gets, too. Because universal forces are with you and so is your inner being. Instant manifestations. I've never had the experience of thinking a thought and having it literally show up immediately. Well, when you think thoughts that you haven't practiced resistant thoughts about, that's why we say start with something easy. When you start with your issue, where you've already got all those engines piled up in opposition, then it takes a little while for you to turn your attention from some of the contradictory thoughts in order to allow your desires to dominate. But when you start with something that you haven't given a lot of thought to, and you just ponder it, then you can receive an instant manifestation. And sometimes that instant manifestation is just another thought, and then another thought, and then another thought, and then another thought, and then the thoughts do begin to turn to things and people and conversations and experiences and piles of money and stuff. Yeah. There have been things I've been thinking about for a long time, though, too. I've wanted to go to Provence for years. And it's always been like, oh, well, you know, one day I'll go, one day I'll go. Oh, it'd be so fun to go. One day I'll go, but not right now. You know, I, I could go now, but not, I'm not going to. There was never, I never went. And the other night I was laying in my bed. I had just gotten to San Antonio and had a good day. Laying in my bed and I'm thinking, gosh, it would be so fun. I wonder where Abraham and Esther will go for their next cruise. It would be so cool if it were Provence. Because I've always wanted to go to Provence, with it, with it, you know, just, it would be great to go with Abraham because you always pick such wonderful venues. And, and then yesterday I opened up the email with the announcement of the new cruise. <laughs> so I can't wait to join you in September. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the other day a woman was telling us that she wanted to come to one of these gatherings and she couldn't figure out how she was going to get here. And a friend of hers said, well, I'm going and I can get you a standby ticket. She worked for an airline. So she arranged a standby ticket for this friend of hers to fly from another city, different than she was flying from, and they were both going to go to Chicago. And so she got to the airport with her standby ticket, and her friend had prepaved it for her in a way that she was able to go right through the TSA clearing with great ease. And when she got to the gate... She was not allowed on the flight. The flight was full, so she couldn't get on. And then the next flight came and left, and she couldn't get on that either. But she didn't feel discouraged. She still felt optimistic, and she called her friend and said, well, I didn't get on the first two flights. What do you think I should do? And her friend was just boarding her flight, and her friend said, well, maybe you could fly to another city, and there might be more standby seats open from that city into Chicago. And so this girl went to the service center, and she said, I was wondering if I maybe could get on a standby flight to New York, and then maybe from there I could get to where I really want to be. And the woman who was helping her behind the counter said, well, where is it you're wanting to go? And she said, I want to go to Chicago. And the woman said, well, I've got a plane leaving. Let me see if I can get you on it. Yes, I can get you on it. So this woman went down to board her flight, and she was the only passenger on the flight. They were moving an aircraft to another place, and it had all the crew and all the flight attendants were all on it. She said she sat there, and the flight attendant stood in front of her and did the safety announcement. <laughs> and then the pilot, the captain, came on the plane, and he said, Ma'am... So she accomplished a private jet because 
She knew what she wanted. She stayed open up to possibilities about it. And she had already progressed enough in the thoughts turning to things that her friend had already been engaged and her friend had already opened some doors. In other words, the better it gets, the better it gets. In the same seminar, another woman said, again, she wanted to come to the gathering, didn't know how she was going to afford it. She didn't have the money, but she wanted to go. So in the train analogy, she wanted to go and couldn't afford it. But this wasn't what she was doing. She wanted to go, felt that something would happen. It'll probably unfold. It'll be all right. Things are always working out for me. She wasn't doing the contradictory conversation with herself. And then she and another friend, a friend who had introduced her to us, who had talked to her about law of attraction, they're taking a walk a few days before the event. And they're walking in the woods. And this woman looks and she sees something sort of shining under a leaf and she reaches for it and it's a great big diamond earring that can't possibly be real because it is very large but it was it was a nine thousand dollar diamond that she was able to exchange for nine thousand dollars <laughs> and so those manifestations come in any moment that there is a desire absent resistance now, how long it takes for the resistance to dissolve is up to you. But when you hold a desire with no resistance, the manifestation is ready for you and you are ready for it. Are you following? So if you really, really want something and you really, really are worried about it, then you're really, really not going to get it anytime soon. If you sort of want it and you don't have any resistance, it's going to come right now, which leads you to a flawed premise. It makes you think little things are easier. And big things are harder. That's not true. It's non-resistance is easy, in fact, sure. While resistance is harder, in fact, probably not even going to come as long as you've got the resistance going. So you have to figure out what subjects you have resistance about and what subjects you don't. And if you want to know, then notice how it's manifesting in your experience. And also notice how you feel about those things. The better you feel about more things, the less resistance you have about those things. And the less resistance you have, then the more you're in the receiving mode. And yes, you're going to move to what you want to call instant manifestation, but we don't want to call it instant manifestation because it isn't instant. You were born with a lot of energy. That wasn't instant. It took you nine months in your mother's stomach to become. That wasn't instant. You were born into an environment where you couldn't talk for a while. That wasn't instant. You sifted and sorted. You put a whole bunch into the vortex. That wasn't instant. But the important thing to know is it's all done now. So you might as well call it instant. You might as well say, I'm ready for everything that I want to come into fruition because it's already all there. It's all gathered and all the cooperative components are there. And all I got to do is chill out. All I got to do is be in a moment where I'm not offering contradictory vibration to what's in my vortex that I want. That's all you got to do. Now, whatever game you play with yourself, whatever you got to do to keep yourself from focusing on what you don't want, that's what you've got to do. We think that it is helpful for you to understand how the laws of the universe work. We think it's helpful to understand law of attraction. We think it's helpful to understand that you get what you think about, whether you want it or not. We think it's helpful to begin noticing the correlation between how you were feeling about that and how it manifested. Not just whether it manifested, whether you allowed it to manifest, but how quickly it manifested. In other words, you can get a handle on this. You can adjust your vibrational frequency on every subject that is important to you. You can, and you can do it quickly. And think about it. If you say, I want a million dollars and I want it fast. And the idea of jumping right into some action where that will happen, like a lottery ticket or whatever it is that you might be thinking about that would bring you a million dollars instantly. Think about how much resistance you have to that because those things just don't happen commonly. But think about how uncommon it is to find a $9,000 diamond in the bushes too. Think about how unusual it is to be the only one on an airplane going to a city. The universe can accommodate you in extraordinary ways when there is an absence of the stuff going on within you that blocks it. So when we say to you that your inner being knows where you want to be in terms of everything, 
and knows where you stand in terms of what you're allowing to manifest in relationship to where you want to be and knows the perfect path of least resistance to call you from where you are to where you want to be. And when you are allowing that calling, that journey on your path of least resistance is the most delicious vacation excursion that you could ever imagine, no matter what it is that you're moving toward. It's that free-flowing, worthy feeling, inspired, secure, capable, flexible, eager, inspired, good feeling, feeling that's what you're going for. Everything that you want, no matter what it is, a material object, a state of being, a pile of money, a relationship, a circumstance, an event, doesn't matter what it is that you want. Every single thing that you want or have ever wanted or anybody has ever wanted or ever will want is because you believe you will feel better in having it. If we can convince you to feel better in the thought of it without the action having of it, if you can take your satisfaction from lining up with what's in the vortex just for a little while, those manifestations will come. And when they begin coming, you know what? You're going to come away from them coming with two important things that you now understand. I can be or do or have anything is one of the things. I can have these things. I can be these things. I can do these things. I can accomplish these manifestations. That's a very big thing that's going to happen to you. You're going to trust in your ability to do whatever it is that you want to do. And soon. That's one thing. But the other thing that you're going to discover is that it was the way to it that was the juice of life. And the good news is, the really good news is, our favorite, favorite good news is that there's always another, 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 another. You're never going to get it done. You're never going to get it done. You're never going to get it done and you can't get it wrong. And the reason you can't get it wrong is because you're never going to get it done. And so... Each of those manifestations that you think you want is just the precursor for the next and the next and the next and the next and the next. In other words, you think you want four seasons till you've had snow. <laughs> and then you want really short winter season, really, really short. One day, like a day of winter, maybe I could just fly in somewhere. So isn't it a nice thing to acknowledge that Life has caused you to create it, and now you're figuring out how to allow what you've already created. You're just letting those good feelings call you. Let the good feelings call you, and then watch what happens. It's delicious. Yeah. Thank really you good. so much. And Esther, thank you for the fun.